The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. <laughs> this uh, greeting, which is sometimes used as part of our liturgies, is found in today's second reading from St. Paul. And using that kind of greeting expresses how we as Christians live in the presence of a God who is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, I mean, that's the way we start pretty much all of our prayers, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. On today's feast, the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, we reflect upon this central truth about God, that He is a Trinity of Persons and one God. And to understand better what it means for God to be Trinity, I think reflecting back upon this recent time of social isolation and, and how it's impacted us can really help us understand in a greater way what this means. You know, having to do all the social distancing and limiting our group interactions, not being always able to get together in person the way that we would wish, thinking twice about the kind of physical contact like shaking hands that we normally would do, even the wearing of masks where it seems to get in the way of being able to, you know, express facial expressions and smile to, to one another. Not being able to gather for so long together in worship of the Lord. All these things have had an impact. It's impacted me and I know many of those that I've talked to as well. We long to have normal human interactions with each other. And there is a reason why this kind of separation has felt so restrictive upon us. And it has to do with the Trinity. So everything within us resists that kind of isolating circumstances that we've had. Because we are not created to be alone. Many of us probably have experienced just how much we long for that community and, and how we're made for it. You know, as good as it is to have the technology that can keep us connected by having Zoom meetings and being able to have mass through the live stream, we, we know it's not the same. That it's not been fully sufficient. We know that we need that person-to-person -person interaction. And the reason that we experience this about ourselves is no mistake. It's within us by design. It comes from the fact that we have been created in God's image and after his likeness. And the God whose image we bear through and through is himself a communion of persons. And that's why we can't live in isolation. We must live as a community, both with God and with each other. And this is what the Trinity is all about. God has revealed to us really the deepest truth about who he is. We find throughout the scriptures that the Father is God, that the Son is God, that the Spirit is God, but that there is only one God. And so that means there are three divine persons in one divine nature. Oftentimes we'll speak about God as being love, and, and this is kind of what we mean, that for there to be love, first you have to have the person that's loving somebody else, and then you have to have that other person who's receiving that love and returning it back to the first person, and then you have to have that mutual relationship of love between them. And that's what we have in God. The Father loves the Son, and He pours out His life to Him, giving His whole self. And the Son, in response, gives His whole self back to the Father, doing all that the Father wills of Him. And that love between the Father and Jesus the Son is so perfect it's so real and infinite that this love is a third person, the Holy Spirit. God is love because he's a communion of persons. And so our very nature as human beings is made in that image. We are made to give and to receive love in a community of persons. And when we're unable to do so, then we begin to experience those negative results. Or when we turn inwardly upon ourselves to our own selfish needs, 
we can sometimes forget that that's really what defines us. Or we can forget that that's how we should see our neighbors, as also being in God's image and likeness, the triune God. We can never let another person's opinions about us or any specific characteristics about ourselves to take that place of that most important truth, that our dignity and our worth, being beloved sons and daughters, come from God alone. And when we do see ourselves and we see each other in that way, then suddenly it opens us up to experience a fullness of life that God desires for us. Because this is what God places before us. Not only is God a trinity of, of persons, not only are we made in his image, so for communion with one another, but God also invites each of us, each of us, into that very life of love of the Trinity itself. Our life of faith is one in which we are drawn into this dynamic exchange of love between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as the priest says at, at every single Mass, we hold Jesus, who is God, and the presence of the Trinity is there in the Eucharist, we express that our life is union with him, through him, in him, with him. O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.